Hi everyone, and welcome back to another mini lecture. Today, I wanna to take some time to talk to you about something that is really important to me, important enough that I fit it into every one of my classes, whether it's general psychology, social psychology, or developmental psychology. And this topic is IQ. Now, when I say IQ, a lot of people, you, might even be thinking intelligence. But as the book talks about, and as we'll talk about today, intelligence and IQ are not exactly the same thing. Intelligence is meant to represent some sort of overall intellectual ability, some set level that you've got. You're born smart or you're born dumb. Now, this has its own problems, but IQ is something entirely different. IQ is a score you get on a test. Whether you get a really good IQ score or relatively low IQ score, that's all it is. It's a score on a test, usually a test of analytical reasoning. If you've taken an IQ test before, it was likely one of the Weschler tests. These tests, developed by a guy whose last name was Weschler, are the most widely used intelligence tests in the world. They have them for young children, for kids in middle school and high school, and for adults also. The Weschler test is a test of analytical reasoning, and like the test that came before it, the binet simone test of intelligence is meant to identify um, fast learners, average learners, and slow learners. This test, though it's advanced a lot from that first one, the binet and simone test of intelligence that was first developed around the turn of the century, uh, it shares a lot of qualities, looking at the way that children problem solve, and um, with the goal of taking children who problem solve better and putting them into more advanced classes, and children who have a hard time on the test, and putting them in remedial classes. But also like the binet simone test of intelligence, it would appear to work, but there are big problems. The Weschler test that a lot of people take appears to work because the children who do better on that test also tend to do better in more advanced classes. They tend to be more successful in school overall, in fact, doing better in college, and then eventually in work than kids who don't do as well on it. Kids who score at the gifted or genius level are likely to make more money than most other people. They do better in school, they get higher marks. Um, but a lot of the other things that we used to think were true about nerds are not true here. Um, these people with high IQs also tend to be taller, fitter, more attractive than their peers. They're more successful socially, they get along well with others, and they're more successful romantically than most other people. Um, they're more likely to report higher levels of marital satisfaction, to stay married longer, and they start having serious relationships sooner than everyone else. A common takeaway from this kind of conclusion, looking at these statistics, is that people with high IQs are just better than everyone else. And this isn't exactly true. I mean, you might assume that because IQ and success later on in life are related to each other, you might assume that high IQs produce successful people. But what a lot of people forget to do is to look at those IQs and ask where those IQs come from. In truth, what we tend to see is that children with high IQs overwhelmingly come from middle and upper class families. Overall, these children come from families that are what we would call high socioeconomic status. Socioeconomic status refers to more than just how much money your family has, though that's a big part of it. It's also how much social standing, how much power those families have. So children who come from white families, Children who come from families with money tend to do better on IQ tests. This more than anything has to do with the privilege that they receive growing up in these families. Privilege refers to the kinds of invisible benefits that people get coming from majority or high income families, the kinds of benefits that include um, better nutrition, better access to educational resources, having a parent at home to help you out with your homework or take care of you or play number and word games with you when parents who don't have as much money need to struggle, they need to work extra jobs to support their kids. Both these kinds of parents love their children equally, and they're willing to do everything it takes to make them as successful as possible. But it just so happens that if you come from a high-income family, you receive exactly the kind of training that's going to help you out on an IQ test. As a result, these children do well on these IQ tests, and then they get streamlined into gifted classes. Once they're located in these gifted classes, they accrue further advantages. The kids who already had the advantages of more money, of parents at home, of being in better schools and having better access to educational resources are given further advantages in these gifted classes. After taking advantage of these benefits in gifted classes, it's no surprise that these kids are then easily placed in honors classes in middle school and then AP, IB, ACE, and dual enrollment classes in high school. The result is that by the time these kids are college age, it looks like they're simply better than all of the students who didn't receive high IQ scores on, the, on these tests. But the truth is that at that point, they've accrued 18 years of advantages that other children just haven't. And these same advantages that make them successful on the, acute, the IQ test also make them successful in the other ways. Having more money gives you access to better nutrition, which will help make you taller. 
Having access to more money means that you don't have to help take care of your siblings. You've got somebody to help out with that. So you can go to spring training. You can go to football practice before and after school. Your parents likely don't have to work late or early so they can pick you up. They can take you to clubs. And when you grow up in the kind of family where you've got money, where you can feel confident and self-assured, it's really easy to take that confidence into a social realm so that you do better when you're around other people. I'm not saying this to suggest that people who come from high backgrounds are necessarily going to be more successful or that people from low-income backgrounds aren't going to be successful or aren't as smart. It's simply that children who have more advantages are more likely to keep getting those advantages later on in life. And understanding that shows us where we need to start re-understanding and reinterpreting IQ in general. Rather than using one score to determine whether or not children should be in gifted classes, we should look at what children overall are struggling in classrooms and give those kids the extra resources. A lot of our problems with IQ boil down to something called a fixed mindset about intelligence. That's a term I want you to know, a fixed mindset. This fixed mindset means that we assume that you come into this world with some sort of innate quality like intelligence. Some people are just smarter than others. That when, in fact, it turns out that some people just have more advantages. Instead of using this fixed mindset, what we should do is make use of a, of a growth mindset. That it might appear that you're good at a certain level, whether it's uh, at sports, at school, at art, or something entirely different. But that if you want to get better at it, you don't need to rely on the advantages that you have or some assumption that um, you've got some level of skill. Instead, what you really need to do is work at it. Based on this, we can really draw the conclusion that students who don't score as well on IQ tests aren't doomed to a life of failure. Instead, we can take solace. We can feel excited about the fact that these children, if given access to the right educational resources, the right mentoring, and the right support, can be just as successful as the students who come from advantaged backgrounds.